This is Tom Fox. I'd like to welcome you to the Compliance Week 2022 podcast series. Compliance Week is thrilled to be back 100% live and in person after three years apart. Back for its 17th year at Compliance Week National 2022, compliance, ethics, legal, and audit professionals will gain insights and make connections at the industry's premier cross-industry national compliance event offering knowledge, packed, accredited sessions, and take-home advice from the most influential leaders in the compliance community. In this podcast series, we will detail some of the speakers and what they will be discussing at the event and why they are attending Compliance Week 2022. I hope you will join me in attending this conference and particularly this year when it's literally the first major compliance conference which will be held live since the pandemic began. We link to the conference in the show notes and listeners to this podcast get a special discount which is also listed in the show notes. I hope to see you in May at Compliance Week 2022. In this episode, I visit with Holly Kulka. Holly is in a regulated industry, and she brings that experience to her presentation on effectively managing risk in a move fast and break things world. I know you'll enjoy this episode. Hello, everyone. This is Tom Fox, back for another episode. Today, I have with me Holly Kulka. Holly, first of all, welcome, and thank you so much for taking the time to visit with me today. Oh, thank you for having me. Holly, could you tell us uh, what your current role is? So my current role is the Global Chief Risk and Compliance Officer for S&P Ratings. And S&P Ratings, as you know, is a very large credit rating agency held within um, the uh, SPGI, S&P Global Company. And in that role, I report directly to the president of uh, S&P Ratings, and I'm responsible for all second line activities. That includes um, some of the traditional risk activities, com- traditional compliance activities, including exams and um, advisory, as well as regulatory reporting, regulatory examinations, um, and a, a number of functions that are specific to credit rating agencies involving our IP and um, validation of those our products and the IP. Holly, you are speaking on a panel at Compliance Week 2022 that I think has one of the most intriguing titles. So I'm going to read it, which is, quote, effectively managing risk in a move fast and fast and break things world, end quote. So uh, recognizing you're one of several panelists, I was wondering what you hope to communicate uh, in your portion of this panel. So um, there are a number of people uh, on the panel. And we all come from a different perspective, but we all are risk and compliance professionals. And what I hope to bring, um, based on my background at this company and prior, is how do you do this in a highly regulated company, right? My company has uh, 24 global regulators. We are very highly regulated, highly examined, very important to the capital markets, and the regulators are very interested in everything we do. So how do you manage the risk? of, of moving forward or not moving forward on new products and initiatives when you're si- when the regulators are sitting there alongside you wanting to make sure that everything is you know buttoned up and perfect. So how do you allow the business to move forward um, without um, tripping over itself, um, but also you know not stopping cold in its tracks for fear of, of, of making a mistake? So that that is I, I, I want to bring the perspective that that can be done in a highly regulated business. It's done maybe slightly differently. And I also believe that some of the tools that you use in a highly regulated business are actually effective um, for less regulated businesses. Uh, They may be, you know, scaled differently, implemented differently, but bringing risk decisions up front um, really helps the business, you know, make smart decisions. And sometimes like a slight 10% difference in approach will really um, make sure the product is effective and successful. Holly, I'm glad you brought up that last point because uh, I've come out of the energy space, which is perhaps less regulated or at least regulated in a different way. But I find that speaking with people like yourself that come out of 
uh, traditionally regulated industries where literally you do have the regulators, if not sitting over your shoulder looking, certainly you're visiting with them much more <laughs> often than we are. Uh, it really uh, has driven a lot of innovation because you've had to be innovative. And it really lends itself to more non-regulated industries. So I'm going to be very intrigued to uh, hear your remarks. Holly, on our last question, uh, it is, what do you hope to get out of Compliance Week 2022? Or conversely, what are some of the things you're looking forward to hearing, seeing, or just seeing colleagues? I, I am really looking forward to being in person with people, right? Um, really happy to be in person with people in my field, but I really want to be with people. I think the uh, the ability to communicate, the ability to, to, to convey a message, the ability to learn is really a lot higher in person. Now, it doesn't mean we have to be in person all the time, but I'm really looking forward to that. And, uh, you know, and similarly, I'm really interested in how people are thinking about returning to work or not returning to work from a regulatory risk and compliance perspective, because at least in my industry, the, the regulators haven't spent a lot of time on this prior to COVID. And I, right now they haven't um, set forth the ground rules, but I do think there are going to be ground rules around um, hybrid work or virtual work. And it would be really interesting to hear how other people are dealing with it. But I also think that until you're in person, you don't even know what you're, you know, you don't know what you're trying to control for. So being in person will be fun. You know, being in person will also help us figure out how we're going to handle the new work environment from, you know, from the second line perspective. Um, and I hope to, you know, get the piece that you can't get on videos. By the same token, I've attended a lot more or different type of things during COVID than I would have otherwise, because normally you would have to go somewhere. Even in Manhattan, it doesn't mean it's easy to do that, right? It still takes the commute time. You got to go there. You got to come back. Um, now you could just show up for the hour long meeting. And so um, it, it's not as if I haven't had the opportunity to to learn from my colleagues in the last two years. It's just that I do think the learning will be uh, qualitatively different. Well, Holly, unfortunately, we're near the end of our time for this episode, but I wanted to thank you for taking the time to visit with me. And I'm greatly looking forward to meeting you in person at Compliance Week 2022. Me too. I'll see you next week. This is Tom Fox again. I hope you'll plan to join me at Compliance Week 2022. Registration information is found in the show notes. And of course, there's a discount code for listeners to this podcast that I've listed in the show notes as well. It's going to be a great conference. We're all going to be able to get together in a full conference for the first time since the pandemic began. I hope you will plan to join me and all of your fellow compliance professionals at Compliance Week 2022.